greeting friends, stitch witches, and fellow thread warlocks, and welcome back to another sewing vlog. In this video, I'll be making Cloud Strife cross-dressing outfit from Final Fantasy VII Remake for another one of my commissions. There's three versions of this dress, and today I'll be making his black and gray one that consists of three layers. Now let's get on to this little princess, shall we? Starting off with my usual, I have all my fabrics washed and ironed out. Having them on the belt really makes the work progress easier. Along with all my research and reference I've gathered, I have all my sketches and breakdown of the entire costume which includes all the sewing notes and details construction. I'm starting off with the bolero. For this garment, I'll be using a commercial pattern from Macau's 3033 and modifying it to fit the silhouette and style of the design. After tracing the pattern onto paper, I started adding alterations and modifying specific areas. I used this specific pattern many times in the past so I didn't do a mock-up this time since I'm very familiar with the fit overall. I love making and draping patterns but I also use commercial and pre-made patterns depending on the project. Having everything marked out, I began cutting on the actual fabric itself. Then I made gray bias tape with this handy bias tape maker here that makes ironing and folding so much easier and faster. The nice thing about them is that they come in different sizes. I'll drop a link below to them along with some of the other supplies I'm using. After that, I started sewing the pieces together. I'm using my shearing foot here to help me lightly gather the cap of the sleeves for the bolero. So I just finished the bolero and before I put on the sleeve, I am going to put on the gray bias trim around it to make it easier before inserting the sleeves on and the lining. And then I'm going to do the ruffles. Well, the ruffle will come before the lining. So after that, after the bias, I'll add on the ruffles, the sleeve, and then the lining. Then it was on to sewing on the bias tape. I marked and outlined the placement of where I wanted to sit and sew along that. When making your own bias tape, it's very important to actually cut the fabric on the bias line because the stretch part of it is what helps with the curve, especially on rounded and circular hems. And the most important part of all next are the ruffles, cutting it out into strips of fabric and then hemming it out with my hem roll foot before gathering it all together. Here are the sleeves I've already gathered. These are the only white colored parts of the entire costume. Then I sew it onto the black sleeves. Just want to say Cloud really has some meticulous detail on his outfit like this one right here on his sleeve that you really don't really notice unless he lifts it up. But I think I'm just going to go with regular top stitching for this unless I want to do like threads or yarn but might just go with top stitching and I'll see how that looks and if it doesn't, if I don't like it then I'll probably switch to just embroidering yarns or something but other than that, yeah. Nope. So the top stitching method didn't work out because it didn't look very nice at all so I just went ahead and grabbed the same gray fabric and basically thread that through the sleeves instead and it actually looks closer to it so now it looks like those big stitches after attaching the jacket lining i finished it off with some hand sewing the last and finishing touch to this are the bows and here we have the finished bolero. So I'm finally done with this part. So for the bolero, I also made the, um, the bow, the tiny cute bow here with snaps detachable because I want to try to make like the smaller parts that looks more like dinky, dinky, or dainty, <laughs> dainty and smaller ones like easily removable. So when you wash them, it doesn't damage them because I feel like you shouldn't be throwing actually they shouldn't be throwing this in the wash in general I usually try to recommend them to dry clean it especially so it doesn't damage any of the costume but yeah this is all done it's all lined and clean I love the ruffles on this and I can move on now now that I'm finished with the bolero it's on to the inner gray dress and time to do a little draping 
I know I just said I was gonna start by draping the, the inside bodice like a split second ago but I just found out that I have a commercial pattern already that I can modify to make the top part which is the inside the bodice so I'm just gonna go do that because it's more time efficient and labor cost wise so I'm gonna basically cut trace it out put it on the mannequin extend what I need put on the pleat and well technically I guess I still am draping because I need to figure out the shape still so I'm gonna go ahead and do that also for the commercial pattern I usually don't cut them directly out of the tissue paper instead what I do is I take them and I put them on the brown paper or any paper for that matter and just trace them out with this handy dandy tracing tool and cut that out instead because then I can take that and modify it instead of cutting it out directly from the commercial pattern I usually like to save them because I need them for the future and I don't have to keep rebuying them over and over and they have different sizes and I want to be able to have access to those sizes. So on to tracing out the original pattern. After cutting it out, I begin splicing up the front bodice to work on the front pleats and extending out the parts I need. Mostly folding and taping as I go, this process overall actually took a couple hours to figure out with the whole measurement and placement. It isn't the final pattern as I have yet to make a mock-up. After the fitting of the first, I will make any alteration needed and finalize the pattern. actually took way longer than I thought. I spent probably a couple hours on it. The initial pattern I did, I spliced up. I totally forgot there was a center gap. So I had to rearrange everything, re-split it, and then the sizing wasn't adding up. So I finally spliced it, played with it around more, and then it worked out. So this is the final bodice, just the half of it. Can't probably really see it because it's a, a print. But I'm gonna go ahead and make a mock-up of the other two, cutting out the fabric, putting it together, and do any final revision once I draped it onto the dress form. Alright, so here's the mock-up for the inside dress of Cloud. I've modified the patterns and pleated it. It actually took me a bit longer because I have to edit the curve right here on the bust line. So maybe it would have been faster with draping, but oh well. Anyways, I also added bonings on the inside, on the side, and the front bust line so it shapes better. So I think that works. I just need to trim a little bit parts of it because it's some part are a little bit too long, but on that, I think I can start cutting it out on the main fabric. Figuring out the final tweak I need, I can now transfer the mock-up onto a finalized piece to cut out on the real fabric and sewing the entire bodice together. I inserted boning into the channels I made through the inside lining for the bodice to give it more shape and structure. So here is the bodice. I spent more time on the top part than anything because I had to cut it on the bias and work on the tuck pleats. But other than that, I got it there. The bodice, the full bodice. I got the boning in already. So now all I need to do left is to cut the lining and sew that on and the top bodice will be done and I'm ready to start working on the bottom portion of the skirt and then I can put on the closure with the zipper and I think the ruffle and gathering and I think yeah it's pretty good progress so far. The bottom skirt portion of the dress consists of a few quarter circle skirt. Then I hung the skirt for a couple days to let the hem stretch out in order to prevent any uneven hem as it stretches out which I will then trim away. After sewing the skirt together, it was time to work on the ruffle of the beast. This part took the longest as I'm ruffling and hemming away for days. Seriously. Luckily, I've been blessed with the shearing and the hem roll foot from my machine so I can gather at the speed of light. The ruffles were 10 inches tall in length and I could feel the weight of the skirt getting heavier as I sew it onto the bottom skirt portion. 
So I just added the ruffle to the end of the gray skirt and it actually took a couple whiles because it was a lot of gathering and I had to cut more strips. I think in total it was like four yards of strips just for um, the bottom ruffle. But now it's all attached and I think I'm gonna go ahead and overlock the inside so that the raw edges are clean. And after that, I can attach it to the bodice. So I forgot to add the petticoat in earlier when I was constructing this. So I added a couple of layers of my own that I had because the client's gonna provide their own petticoat later on. And now she is looking fine. It's nice and poofed out. Yay, that petticoat is always the finishing touch to every dress. All right, so all I need to do left is to add on the zipper. I'll be using an all-purpose uh, zipper here. The method that I'm going with is where I have the seam closed and then I'm gonna add on the zipper and then cut open that seam again and then the zipper will be able to function. I didn't go with an invisible zipper this time only because the gather is actually quite thick and then the hem of it is also thick and I had that in the, in the past where the thicker the fabric the harder it is to pull the invisible zipper so I found a way with a method online to use all purpose zipper and still make it semi invisible so it won't show like this part like the zip part of it so it'll be hidden in between the sandwich of the seam still so we're gonna go put that on. Okay, so I put on the zipper and I'm actually done. The last little part that I'm gonna do is just basically hand sewing this part down so it lays flat so the seam will stay nice and smooth when they pull the zipper up and down. But after that, yeah, I am done with the dress. Probably gonna throw it on the mannequin after and give it a really good iron because I had to wrestle this dress a lot while sewing because it was actually pretty heavy. But yeah, yay! After tacking and sewing down the seam of the zipper, the gray dress was done and moving on to the last outer dress. Alrighty, so we are back and I'm finally going to start on Cloud's last garment which is the black dress. So I'm going to be draping the bodice for this one since I don't think I have any pre-made or commercial pattern ready for that. So I'm just going to make this one from scratch which is fine. So here I have saran wrap and duct tape ready. The saran wrap I use is usually this roll. It's smaller so it's easier to manage and I can just basically wrap it around. I got this from, I think you can also find it at Target but I got mine from Walmart. It's in the usually the moving section where they have all the packaging tape boxes and bubble wrap so you can find the roll there it lasts you a quite a long time I had this probably for over a couple years now and it's still ongoing and after that you just tape it and I just draw on the design figure out the measurements cut it out do um, a test mock-up fabric and then finalize the pattern on paper so I'm going to do that and I'll be back for the top bodice, I sketched out the front and back piece. This one has a side front on the bust side along with another layer over it. The marking process tend to be messy, but will be clean after having everything cut out and traced back onto actual paper. Alright, so I just finished drawing out the pattern and I labeled it with electrical tape just to outline it so I can cut it out easier. I'll shape and redraw it and make it cleaner when I cut it out and transfer it, transfer, transfer it on paper. But I like using electrical tape sometimes because they curve very well and they stretch. So I use them to outline the pattern shape if there's more than one piece. So for clouds up bodice, there's like two pieces on it. There's the main bodice and then on the bottom there's like a lower waist that's like separate so it's probably gonna be two pieces to it so the yellow and this blue outline right here that waist piece I was talking about starts on the under bust so I'm probably just gonna start at the side seam and then make it all the way to the front part of the rest of the bodice and it's basically gonna be a a front closure so you can take it on and off by the front from the looks of it and then for the skirt it's just gonna be a gathered rectangle piece like one long strip and then I'm gonna gather that and that's gonna be the bottom of the skirt and then more ruffle gathering to it afterwards 
So this one's a little bit easier to work on. So hopefully I say that. Okay, so here is the mock-up for the pattern of the dress. And so far it seems like it fits. I've added the measurement that I know I needed to this after cutting it out on the actual fabric. So mostly just seam allowance, a little bit of small inches to even out some of the hemlines. And this will be the part that's going to be on the underbus. I made a white just as a contrast so I can tell the difference. But yeah, and I just added, I need to add like a, a inch or two on the opening. I'm probably going to make this either a hook and eye or a snap for the closure. And that should be it. It's also going to be lined on the inside. And then after I cut this out, I'm going to start on the skirt. Actually, I'll work on the skirt because I need to put it on before the lining so I can actually sew and sandwich everything together. But yeah, good on this part and I'll start on cutting on the actual fabric now. Oh, and before sewing on everything together, I need to remember that I need to add on the gray bias trim detail on the neckline and the waist part of the area. So, gotta put those on before the lining and everything else. And here is the top bodice for the black dress that I've just finished. I'm just going to top stitch a couple of parts and also make this bow detachable snap because right now it's being held on with pins but it's going to be uh, basically the openings on the front. Uh, I think I'll do snaps. Yeah, I think either snaps or velcro to a certain point and just basically when you the openings through the front, you just wear it and then you just close it through the front closer. But yeah, I'm going to work on the skirt portion after putting the final touches for the top part. It's probably gonna be like a an inch waistband right here because I made this part. This part's pretty thick because it's the combine of the under bus part of the piece and this together. So after I sew everything together, this part's a little thick, but it's fine. So I'm gonna make that one inch waistband and then after that, I'm gonna start gathering skirts for it. And after that, it's gonna be more ruffle gathering. And after I attach everything, I can put on the closure. So that will be next. With the top bodice part complete, it is time to work on the bottom skirt portion. The black part is shorter in the hem length than the gray dress, so I'm measuring it out to make sure it sits on the correct length. Alright, so I have everything cut out and now it's for a really long sewing session time. So I got the, the black skirt here which I have to sew together and gather and then a lot and lot of gathering for the bottom tier. So it's going to be also a lot of hemming because it's probably about, I think all this was maybe 4 yards of, yeah, 4 yards total cut into like strips of seven inches and so I have to hem them all, sew it together, and then gather them. And since I didn't have enough bias tape, I also have to make that. So I'm gonna be sewing all these together and then iron and then make them the bias tape I need. So it's gonna be just one massive sewing session. It is no joke when I said this was an endless journey of just hemming and gathering. So many more cutting infinite strips to gather up. I also had to attach on the bias tape before adding on the ruffles, and that also took a while. It's like doing a side quest in a side quest. Then I attached the gather ruffles to the hem of the skirt using these sewing clips here, and they are definitely a lifesaver, especially useful on holding down fabric thickness and gathers as you sew. For the front closure, I added both snaps and hooks and eye. And the finishing touch of the back bow. And now I present to you Claudia, the belle of the ball, who won take her out for a spin on the dance floor. So this commission was a wild one. It was a lot of gathering, a lot, from the bottom tier to the waistband area to even the sleeves and then all the ruffles and bias tape and all the little bows. But in general, I had a lot of fun making this and I'm glad to be able to make this as one of my commission requests. So now I'm probably just going to do a little showcase and spin her around. I can't really actually spin her around here because 
there's actually no stand for this. It's actually, the mannequin's actually popped on the chair because the stand broke. So I'm just gonna go ahead and jump straight to the close-up and showcase. This concludes the end of the side quest, so if you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more of my stitch crafting and sewing journey. Thank you so much and I'll see you all in the next video. Treat your needle and thread like they're your wine and bread and happy crafting! Bye!